On day 11 of the partial government shutdown, the Republican Party appears to be getting most of the blame here. Business groups from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce to the National Retail Federation, both with close ties, of course, to the GOP, well, they're now pressing for an end to what they're calling the politics of brinksmanship. Yeah, Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn is vice chair of the House Committee on Energy and Commerce, joins us now from Capitol Hill. You know, obviously, we've all seen the, you know, the people are mad, but the core group behind this, the, the group of right-wing uh, Republicans, seem to be taking the lead here and potentially damaging uh, more moderate elements of the party. Do you feel that the party's being hijacked or uh, the Ted Cruz's <laughs> representative of how you all feel? You know, I, I tell you what, it's so interesting uh, to hear the way you all frame this. My goodness. And what we know is that the American people, by and large, have overwhelmingly said, you've got to do something about the federal spending. $17 trillion worth of debt is not acceptable. And bear in mind, House Republicans have done a lot to try to avoid a government shutdown. We've tried to get the Senate to work with us. We've sent them four different CRs. We're asking them to work with us on the debt ceiling. We've sent them 16 different funding bills. Please take them up. Uh, we have voted to fund most of the federal government and keep it open. And by the way, 83% of the federal government is open. But I'll tell you what you are right about. People do not like the fact that there seems to be this dissension in Washington, D.C. And they have a right to be angry about that. But I tell you what, they need to be looking at Harry Reid and the president who were saying will not negotiate. Uh, you can't put certain things on the table. Uh, what we are asking them to do is to join us at that table. And out wanna, of respect for sure. the taxpayer, let's solve this problem. I, I, I want to move the discussion forward, if we could, here, talking about reopening the government here. There are obviously two plans sure. from the Republicans one on the House side, one on the Senate side. The House side doesn't necessarily guarantee that the government would, would reopen during that negotiating period, that six weeks where the debt ceiling is raised. But the Senate right. side actually does say that that is part of the priority of actually reopening the government. Which plan would you support? I mean, what are you willing to do in order to reopen the government? I think the House has a good plan, and we want to continue to work through these funding issues. But you the know, House we have doesn't to remember, actually reopen the government. I mean, the, the, the House allows a six-week extension to raise the debt ceiling. So the how, CR. Would you, how would you reopen the government? I mean, the Senate Republicans do at least have that as part of their plan. Reopening the House, I mean, reopening the federal government means the Senate has got to join the House and negotiate through this continuing resolution and through a budget. And that is going to be a priority. We cannot continue to spend money we, not, we do not have for programs we do not want. And passing the bill onto our children and grandchildren, $53,000 per person is what the debt load is right now. $53,000. That is not acceptable. Continuing to look at a growing debt and annual deficits that mount up every year, borrowing $2 billion a day. We are saying this is not responsible. You've got to finally get a handle well, on well, it. Well, and is, is we're, shutting we're down the government do and putting the, the debt reputation of this country at risk responsible, can't these negotiations happen outside of that process, which really affects the rest of the world? You've got two separate issues. You've got the debt ceiling issue, and the House doesn't want us to have a default on the debt. I think the Speaker's been very clear about that. You've got the continuing resolution that deals with the partial government shutdown. As I said, 83% of the federal government is open. Do you think it is good to be out here borrowing $2 billion but a day? But kicking the debt Do ceiling down the road six weeks solves nothing, does it? for us to have China, it? Japan, OPEC out here holding our debt? You know, what we have to do is get the spending under control. We don't have a revenue problem. We have a spending and priority problem. And what we in the House are saying is, look, the House controls the purse, purse strings. You have to put these issues on the table. You cannot let the out-of-control spending continue. You cannot let this out-of-control borrowing $2 billion a day. You cannot continue to do that.
And, and, and so essentially, I mean, you're standing by the House Republican plan, which which doesn't reopen the government necessarily. And Absolutely, to Michael's, we're standing to Michael's there is a way. point, I mean, it, it does kick the can down. The debt ceiling debate will continue six weeks later. No, and many of the international the markets, the, the international markets already responding. The International Monetary Fund is, is, is horrified at how the U.S. The government House, is behaving. I, I would remind you, the House is the entity, the chamber that has put plan after plan after plan on the table and has asked the Senate and the White House to work with us. We were pleased that yesterday the White House invited some of our elected leadership down. That is a step forward. The Senate is talking with the President this morning. We would hope that Harry Reid would finally negotiate with the House and would deal with the budget issues, the funding issues. He has tried to kick these to the side every single year. We would love for them to work with us on the CR and get the government open. We are hopeful that they are going to work with us on the debt ceiling, that the okay, president yeah. will work with us on it and make certain that there is no default. Right. Congresswoman, thanks so much, Marsha Blackburn. Thank there. you.